Uh, thank you all for being here today. Uh, I want to take you back with me to a foggy morning on Highway 1 in California a few years ago. A windy, dangerous road. That morning, I almost died and I almost killed four innocent people. I was texting while driving. So this was an important conversation, a deal announcement. I was an important vice president, an executive at a tech company. I knew what I was doing was wrong and stupid. I actually remember thinking, this isn't too smart, but I couldn't stop. I was texting back and forth with colleagues, really only doing this on the straightaways and looking up on the curves. Crazy, stupid, dangerous. Right before I was about to hit send, a primal alarm bell went off in my brain. I looked up and saw four cyclists, three men and a woman. The road was high above the Pacific Ocean, rocky cliffs far below. I was about to hit them. I slammed on the brakes and screeched to a halt just in time. If I had hit them, they would have died, and my life would have been forever changed in a terrible, terrible way. I pulled off to the side of the road, heart pounding. I thought about my family and my children. And then I thought, how unbelievably selfish. What if those cyclists had family and children and friends? And what was so important about my conversation that it was worth killing someone over? Why was I, an otherwise highly functioning, capable person, unable to stop doing something so obviously stupid and dangerous. So the truth is, I'm not alone. Roughly 80% of all drivers pick up and touch their smartphones, according to one of the most comprehensive studies to date. And by some estimates, one third of all drivers text or send messages while driving. This is really the tip of the iceberg. So today's talk is about what I call distracted living and how to fix it. And how that morning on Highway 1 led me to a deep self-evaluation of how technology was hacking away at our happiness. From texting while driving to Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Tinder, and Fortnite. How many of you have children who play Fortnite? or kids, so you probably know what I'm talking about. Technology is eroding our control and our happiness. So how many of you have also had a wonderful face-to-face -face conversation interrupted by a text or a call or someone just looking down at their phone? And then you knew that that person was no longer there with you. How many of you have planned to go to the gym or go for a hike? And you look down and you realize, oh, I don't have any more time. I can't go because you spent the last 30 minutes mindlessly scrolling Facebook or Instagram or responding to random slacks or emails from work. How did this make you feel? Or found yourself awake at three in the morning reading news articles, maybe about politics? that you won't even remember the next day. How did this make you feel? Did you ask yourself that question? Or have you been on a playground and seen a child screaming, mommy, daddy, look at my tricks, and the parents are buried in their screens? How did this make you feel? I've seen this, and it made me feel very sad. at work, at play, at home, with our families and with our friends, how does technology make us feel? 
I believe we can strike a healthier, happier balance. A life where we use technology on our own terms, where technology makes us happier, not sadder and more distracted. So how we use technology not only impacts the way we feel, but it also directly impacts our minds and our bodies in ways we may not even understand or think about. So I don't know about all of you, but I used to be able to read books and type, write for three, four hours at a stretch. I can't anymore. Why? Because my brain has actually changed. My focus muscles have atrophied. And with that atrophy, I have lost one of the most important capabilities that humans have, the capacity for deep, focused thought. Which, by the way, is absolutely critical for creative, fulfilling work. How many of you have spent an entire day flipping from one task to the next, back and forth, and found at the end of the day you felt like you got nothing done? How did you feel? Annoyed, probably. And of course you did, because humans are designed to feel happier when we complete things, not when we flip back and forth, like checking things off on a list. Yet modern technology is making it harder and harder and harder for us to focus on the one task. Technology not only impacts the way our minds work, but it's directly impacting our bodies in ways we may not think about. So how many of you here have kids or are kids? So plenty of you, I'm sure. How many of you struggle with them spending too much time playing video games, using their phones, or spending time on social media? Okay. Evidence is becoming clearer and clearer that today's children are moving less and less. And this is increasing with each subsequent generation. Today's kids are less likely to go to a playground, to ride a bike, or to run. And it shows. One large research study found that 30-year-old, one large research study found that 10-year-olds today take 90 seconds longer to run a mile than to 10-year-olds 30 years ago. Ponder that for a second. These are children. There's no reason that this should be happening. And this is bad because to move is to be human. It makes us happy. Not surprisingly as well, obesity is becoming one of the most critical health issues for children today. And then there's sleep, or lack of it. Sleep is directly, lack of sleep is directly connected to depression and suicide. And doctors are starting to think that lack of sleep may be related to the rapid rise in metabolic disorders like diabetes. You could not create a better device to destroy our sleep than the smartphone. It emits an intense light that tells our brains, time to wake up. We carry it with us everywhere we go. We sleep with it. It's the primary mechanism now we use to consume video, the internet, emails, play games. And increasingly, it looks like it is impacting our sleep. In one major study, American adults, roughly 30% of American adults, get six hours of sleep or less, which is not a lot of sleep. So how can we gain better control of this? How can we start to hack back our happiness? I believe we can strike a better balance, regain control, and hack back our happiness. And it starts with getting back in touch with our feelings. Sounds kind of corny and woo-woo, I know. But asking a simple question, how do I feel, is a great interrupter of bad tech behavior. You see, too often, our subconscious minds actually dictate our actions. This is particularly true 
when we were in the grips of technology, barraged by, beep, by beeps, chimes, and alerts. And really, this is by design. Those products were built to grab and hold as much of our attention as possible. The smartest product designers in Silicon Valley have long used sophisticated technological tricks and neurological tricks to push our buttons. So really, this is all about control. Who controls our minds? The technology and the companies that make it, or us? I believe we can win this battle by asking that simple question, how does it make us feel, and raising the subconscious to the conscious. Here's a simple exercise you all can do to help illuminate how much you're using technology and what you're doing. I did it. Take a notebook and a pen, and for a whole day, or maybe a half day, write down everything you do with technology on your smartphone or your laptop. Sounds exhausting. <laughs> but also sobering and eye-opening. Most likely, you will discover you're spending significantly more time with your technology, and you're flipping back and forth far more than you realized. Now, with this information, you can start to design a better life. You can decide, I want to curtail this. I want to eliminate that. This makes me happy. And with clear information from actual observations, you can design a better life with technology. Now, this is not arbitrary, okay? Some people, for example, love Facebook. They, and it's good for them, it makes them happy. That's okay. I have a very good friend who uses Facebook as a support group for gluten-free diets. She talks to her friends, they swap recipes. This is great. But for most people, excessive consumption of social media or any technology is bad. And this is particularly true for Facebook and Instagram because it drives comparisons. Comparisons of looks, vacations, families. Comparisons don't make us happy. And this is why passive consumption of social media is consistently tied to diminishment of happiness. So how do we reduce our use of these types of technologies? How do we reduce our use of Facebook, for example? It's actually not that hard. Get Facebook out of your face. Take it off your phone, shut off the notifications, uninstall Messenger, inject friction, raise the decision from the subconscious to the conscious. And with this kind of mindset, you can inject or create lots of design rules for your life that are simple and easy to follow. Here are some of mine. No smartphone in the bedroom at night. No smartphone on the dinner table or at a restaurant. No Twitter sessions longer than five minutes. No laptops in meetings unless I'm taking notes. And definitely, definitely, no email or social media first thing in the morning. Keep that precious time for your most important thoughts. Now, we can't totally switch off. That would be ridiculous. Try telling your boss or your family or your friends, I don't do email anymore, I'm sorry. <laughs> How many of you want to go back to walking into a travel agency or a bank to conduct a transaction. <laughs> I don't, okay? But we can take better control of the technology we have in front of us, structure a life where we're using it on the terms that we dictate rather than the terms that the companies are telling us and all the alerts and the beeps and the chimes are making us feel. So technology is evolving faster and faster, okay? And this will continue. Three years ago, how many of you knew what Alexa was? Now we can't stop talking about her, literally. Virtual, virtual reality is on the horizon. It's coming very quickly, and that's total tech immersion. But one thing remains constant. We have to continue renegotiating our relationship with technology, but we can continue to construct a life with technology that's productive and happy. And the best way to do that is to keep asking ourselves the simple question, how do I feel? How do I feel?
Thank you very much.